going on everybody um i'm taking a break from the shining for a little for uh maybe about another day or so uh i don't know i'm taking a break i'm letting everybody catch up i've been spitting out two or three chapters a day you know except for yesterday and the day before i think and you know that's that's 18 uh excuse me 17 chapters 18 videos you know that's that's hard to watch especially when they're they're uh, at least half an hour uh, long that being said I don't wanna just leave a channel uh, dead for a while so what I thought would be a really really nice treat would be to read an original story uh, I wrote this one about uh, this I've got it dated actually, I'm sorry. December 31st, 2011. Well, actually, I started it in the middle of summer. And that might mean something to some of you. I know it means a lot to me that I started it near April. Uh, actually, a couple months after because I was still recuperating from it. But uh, you may see why. Uh, this was actually supposed to be turned into a movie where I would we would basically borrow my uncle's camera and get a group of people and we would do this this uh this script um there was a lot of of ideas floating around at the time and I finally got a a girl that would that would do it and it it never got done and it doesn't look like it ever will uh, because we're so estranged, we're so distant from each other right now. Uh, uh, to the point, you know, I can't get a hold of anybody except for that one person, you know. You know how it is. Anyway, I'm going to be throwing in a bunch of, of facts, and you'll have to excuse me. I've got a little bit of nasal, nasal congestion, so I'm sorry. Uh... I'm going to be throwing in little facts about the story as I go, so pardon me if you're really into the story and I stop you. This is called The Case That Should Not Be. This was named after the Metallica song, The Thing That Should Not Be. And really, it's kind of the, kind of the same thing. Uh, the thing shouldn't have happened. The case, the case should not have uh, done what it's done in the story. Chapter 1, The Case That Should Not Be. Now, the original plan was that this movie was going to be shot in black and white. I was going to be narrating throughout. There was going to be all kinds of music in it. Uh, it later changed to just us acting it was going to be in color it was going to be shot in my house you know we had all these different parts planned out and I cut the script short because I wanted to get the damn thing done uh, I felt that uh, this has been a skeleton in my closet for over a year now uh, it's simply simply because what it's actually written about uh, few of you, well most of you actually, know the story behind this but you don't know that this story is about this excuse me like I said I've got nasal congestion and I'm going to do my best to act this out because that's what a good actor does. He plays through the pain. Chapter 1. The Case That Should Not Be. I'm just readjusting my earphones for no reason. I was at rock bottom for the last two years. The love of my life had been murdered during that time. Shot in cold blood in front of me. I'm going to stop you there. It's actually been over a year, but you know, whatever. I was 
I retired as a detective of the NYPD. My partner stayed on the for on the force. I messed up in my grammar and it's messing me up, so I'm having to rewrite it as I go. It was during one of those nights where I sit in my chair at my home and cry myself to sleep when a knock on my on my door startled me. I'm coming. I walk to the door, wiping my eyes, wanting to disguise my tears of love lost to my visitor. I found a woman who I saw as my murdered Lucy. I was struck by this woman and staggered back a little bit. Back a little. She looked concerned. Tony Mancini? Uh, yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. I am. Uh, how may I help you? I have a case. Uh, sorry ma'am, I'm retired. As I began to close the door, she stopped the door with her hand. I honestly urge you to look at what I have. I think you'll reconsider. Please, come in. The reason I let her in was that I knew I couldn't change this woman's mind, just like Lucy. Um, may I take your coat? No, thank you. She sat down, every single move full of grace. As I sat at my desk, full of disguised worry at why this woman would show up at my doorstep, she pulled out a manila envelope and slapped a manila folder and slapped it authoritatively on my makeshift desk. I looked at the name scribbled on the tag. My heart and stomach dropped simultaneously as scrawled on the folder was the name of my lover. Now, throughout this story, it's been changed between lover and fiance. And at the time, the person who this story is about was more like a fiance than a lover, but we weren't really engaged. All right, so keep that in mind. Actually, don't keep that in mind. That's not important at all. Jesus. It had to be today, didn't it? She seemed to have noticed I would be apprehensive to taking this case. Hell, I was apprehensive at opening at even opening the folder. Too many bad memories were locked inside this case that had been welded shut for the last two years. Detective I cut her off before before she could finish. Uh scrolled up instead of down I'm a former detective I'm sorry who do you think you are tracking me down to give me the case that my lover died in murdered on top of that Mr. Mancini please calm down don't tell me to calm down ma'am it only makes it worse would you not like closure vengeance redemption for your love that doesn't bring her back no but will it Will it not give you a sense of accomplishment? Ma'am, I will ask again. Why did you track me down? I knew you were the only one who would take this case and that could solve it at the same time. Closure, you say? I know we've only met, but I'm positive you will take this case. Are you a man who believes in fate, Mr. Mancini? This was a very difficult question at the time due to circumstances surrounding it. Alright. I dabble in religion. I do believe that we're destined to do something in our lives, however. <clears throat> um, I believe that you will take this case to satisfy your personal gains. It may not be your destiny, but that's what I think. never get this red wiping my nose like I am you be gone for real hey be gone <laughs> hello Shamu I believe that you want to take this case to satisfy your personal... Oh, I already read that. 
Ma'am, I will take this case to satisfy your personal mission. What is your interest in this case, if I may ask? <laughs> okay. Tune. <laughs> nah, that's no problem. I'm just messing with you. All right. I was a friend of your murdered mate. I have a vested interest in this case almost as much as you do. I find that hard to believe, ma'am. I was I was ad living. That's not an actual one. But I do find that hard to believe. With that, I shook her hand, and she passed me a piece of paper with seven digits on it. Her number to be reached if I found anything. That was the beginning of this story. This particular story is one I will never forget. Now, usually, I separate chapters here. But, I, I'm just going to go ahead and read the whole thing. It's not that long. And it's very easy to follow. Shit, hold on. I said a dirty word. Uh, I don't think any of you mind. That's just how I am. Chapter 2 Friends Not Forgotten. Alright. As soon as the door shut behind this mysterious friend of my mur as soon as the door shut behind this mysterious friend of my murdered lover and I put left there, I, I guess I got confused. I dialed the number of the one man that I knew I could trust and that would have my back no matter what. Hello, Jack? Tony, how are ya? I'm a little shaken to tell the truth. What's the matter? Well, this lady just came by. Said she was a friend of... of her. She slapped her file on my desk. Asked me if I would take it. It's closed, right, Jack? Yeah, it's been closed for two years. You remember the details, I'm sure. That I did. My love was shot by the mafia. Now, while I was writing this several different scenes went through my head of how this would make sense and this is one of the things I don't like about the story is that it it doesn't make sense the ending doesn't match up with the beginning and you can really tell that uh, by how it's written so bear with me uh, this was a way to express my depression that I was having at the time and deal with every day. So, deal with it. Uh, they killed her while I was sleeping. The boss man left a note. It was hand typed saying sh that she had it coming for a long time now. It seemed like only yesterday. The pain was still very real. I feel you, man. Um, Tony? Yes. What did you say? I took it. You can't take it, Tony. It's closed. The woman didn't seem so sure. It was like she knew something I didn't. Most people, my fuck. Most women think that, but more often than not, it turns out to be untrue. I know you have a grudge against women, but you didn't see this dame. She was something else. Most are something else, Tone. Thanks for input, Jackie Boy. Thanks for the input, Jackie Boy. I think it's time to call an old friend. Good luck, brother. You're going to need it. Thanks. Cut away. Chief, I need him. Oh, shit. Pants. Uh. Messed up. Hold on. Chief, I need information on a case. Why would I give you information on a case? You were tired. His tone was skeptical as always. He said, you're retired, as if I were a student who had trouble with the sharp learning curve that the teacher was instructing with ease. 
I responded with an impatient sigh. He should know that sigh after all these years of my working the homicide desk. I recounted the exact words I described to Jack. I could feel him shaking his head on the other line. There are two holes in your story. One, and these are very good points by the way. One, why would a supposed friend have information on a closed case? Two, and I will say it again, you are retired. Once again, his skepticism is in full. Full. Good old chief, who says that your boss doesn't level with you, right? And that's actually in me. I tried to give a Morgan Freeman narration to it and kind of throw uh, first person in there and second person, you know, more interactive. It was written as a narration, okay? Get off my back. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to be constantly wiping my nose. My detective skills haven't been taken away just because I don't work under you anymore. Don't get smart with me, Mancini. Humor me, Chief. God damn it, I hate Alright, here we go. I don't have to do anything for you. You don't work for me. Thanks for your help, Chief. I hit the end button, uttering his rank as if it were not true. No skin off his high, high in the air nose, I'm sure. But it made me feel slightly back in reality. I turned my attention to the folder on my desk. There are so many poisons telling me not to open this damn thing. I opened it up as every fiber of my body screamed not to uh, even louder than ever. Her picture was the first thing I saw. My heart fluttered even now. Her name, age, and her cause of death were printed clearly enough for me to see. Once the mob boss was found guilty, the case was closed. What was the need in further investigation? Apparently, there was more to this case than was previously thought. Chief said I couldn't investigate this case, but I wasn't working with him anymore. He couldn't tell me what to do. What have I got myself into? The sound of my own voice scared me. My thoughts were so loud that when my voice broke through, I jumped. A shudder ran through me as I relived the day of the murder that the mob boss testified. Every gruesome detail out in the open in front of the jurors. Uh, we, uh, shit. And I'm sorry I can't change my voice like I, like I have been for The Shining. There's, there's not really much room for change. We all pretty much have the same dialect, these actors that I'm with. Uh, the only one I'm changing it for is Jack, who's got that upbeat type tone. And that's true to his, his actor as well. He's always a, a vibrant character. Alright. We had to hit on her for a long time. She had had a bad history with us. We finally decided that we had had enough of her. And this is the uh, the mob boss testifying. We waited until the middle of the night. We broke in the front door. She let out a scream that was cut off by a boy of mine covering her mouth with a rag of chloroform. She passed out. I personally took the rag and wrapped it around the muzzle of my pistol and shot once right to her heart. And that's going to make no sense. Like I said, this the ending wasn't planned out. It was kind of like, just get it the fuck out of my sight. I'm done with it. After the testimony, no one in that courtroom doubted his guilt. How could they? His prints were on the door, the windows, the body, and the gun. His henchman also testified that he was there. I shook myself out of the memory and picked up the phone, calling the woman who brought me my lover's case. Hello? Yes, this is Tony Mancini. You came by my house earlier today. 
Yes, sir. Do you have something for me? Only a question, if I may, ma'am. You may ask. When the killer confessed, it was too easy. Do you have any deductions of why this is? Oh, man. I believe that is your job, Mr. Mancini. That it that it is. Do you have any opinion? Uh, do you have an opinion to grease the wheels, as they say, Miss? I can't say that I do. All right, thank you for your time, Miss. I still got no help from anyone. This is not going to be easy to. This was not going to be easy to collect the necessary information. One more call for the day. The man I can trust. Hello, Jack. It's Tony again. What you need, buddy? I'm gonna need help working on this case. Feel like teaming up again? Ah, sure, Tone. I'll do the case. I just retired from the department. Why, Jack? I realized the chief is a tyrant and formally resigned. He asked my reasons. You know what I told him? What'd you say? I told him you said up yours. That pissed him off. I had to chuckle. <laughs> I bet. Thanks, brother. No problem. I'm going to try and get some sleep. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I didn't get any sleep. I didn't think I would. I told him that. He probably didn't. He probably didn't think I would sleep either. Okay, this story is really thrown together. Reading, <laughs> reading back over it now, it really sucks. But it was great at the time. And it was a way to express myself. And we'll talk about that once we finish the story. Chapter 3. It's it's not got that far to go. We just got this chapter in the next. It's not really a chapter. Actually, just this chapter. Chapter 3, Investigating a Closed Case, Day 1. Would you just think about this? There are two private detectives, just newly resigned homicide detectives, of the NYPD investigating a restricted and closed case. Just think about that for a minute. Let, let me let that sink in. Aren't you glad we aren't working for that hard ass anymore? I'm as well. The chief and I have always butted heads. I'm glad he's not watching me every. Oh, fuck. I'm glad he's not watching every step I make, like a song from the police. And if, which it's kind of funny. I didn't think about it when I wrote this, but they're policemen, and I'm also referencing a rapist song from the police. So it's pretty funny now that I think about it. But I'm not gonna laugh. It's very hard to make me laugh nowadays. I laugh at uh, stupid people. Uh, I've always laughed at stupid people. Uh, Mitch Hedberg, and uh, he does not count as a stupid person before you go there. Uh, a couple other things, but anyway. Jack wanted to refresh his memory on the case. I'll let him. God. By the way, it's summer. I don't have to change my shirt. I'm not going anywhere, not doing anything. I don't have to change my shirt for nothing. Uh, Jack wanted to refresh his memory on the case. I let him. I remembered it well enough to never have to look at it again. I leaned back in the chair and rubbed... Uh, he leaned back in the chair and rubbed his eyes with the heel of his hands. I'm going to take my glasses off because I'm going to start doing these motions. There we go. He leaned back in the chair and rubbed his eyes with the heel of his hands to adjust himself to the light after staring at white paper for so long. Oh, what's wrong with this case, Tony? The mob boss gave up too easily, Jack. What's the big deal? Maybe he wanted to be caught. If he did, he would have done it sooner than when we dragged his sorry ass to court. You've got a point, but maybe the family wouldn't let him. He's the godfather. They can't tell him what to do. Marlon Brando or no, his pride might have stopped him. Marlon Brando played the godfather in the Godfather series. 
Christ, if you didn't catch the reference. Yeah, oh, fuck me. My laptop mouse is out to get me. If his pride didn't want him caught, he wouldn't have told the truth. We can sit here and theorize all we want, but it means nothing if we can't prove it. It's time to pay our killer a visit. And I never differentiate between who's speaking, so I'm sorry. Uh, he's, he's the, Jack is the voice of reason. Tony is the one that's saying he gave up to you. Alright, time to pay our killer a visit. Of course, we knew the visiting hours of the prisons around the area. We had no trouble getting in to see the mob boss. You're going to have to suspend your disbelief to an extreme degree to love this story. Because there's a lot of plot holes. There's several plot holes in this. Why would they let two basically nobodies into the viewing area for no reason? Anyway, made sense at the time. This story, it, this story was just my response. I couldn't just write out everything that happened as they were. I had to come up with with some story. So that particular occasion wouldn't be staring me in the face uh, more than it already is, you know. Um. Oh, fuck. All right, I sat I sat down in front of him, while Jack stood behind me, arms crossed in front of his. Ch I can't cross my arms for some reason. In front of his chest, in a familiar mannerism with detectives. What the hell do you want, Mancini? You sound happy to see me. I I shit. I shit. Everyone shits. You sound happy to see me. I assure you I don't like this meeting any more than you. What do you want? I slapped the file on his desk. A smile touched his face. Find something to slap down here. I've, I've got nothing. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, fuck. This is actually my favorite scene. Because... It really shows uh, a Hannibal Lecter type approach to things because you sit there and you talk to him for like like five to ten minutes and you get nowhere with it at all. He, he kind of comes away as the victor the mob boss does. Uh, sorry. I slapped the file on his desk. A smile touched his face. I'm doing my time. What would you like to know that you don't already? What happened to her? Well, don't you remember? Of course I do. More evidence has resurfaced. I'll ask again. What happened? More evidence? What do you mean? Answer the question, dirtbag. That's Jack. I asked the questions, and, and when the interrogative veer from my question, he reinforces them. Uh, shit. With a sigh, the mob boss recounted what had happened back to me. During this, Jack leaned against the wall, hearing all this just minutes before. We did the hit, just like I testified to it two years ago. Nothing has changed except... Nothing has changed since then, except now I'm doing my time in this hole. Jesus Christ. Alright. Excuse me, hold on just a second.
closing the game. Still sucks. All right. Nothing has changed since then except now I'm doing my time in this hole. It seems as though there is more to this case than what was sealed away. Tell me, where did you get this information? You're not in the NYPD anymore, detective. Read the papers, do you? <laughs> I, I, w I was going to laugh to do the next line. But... Alright, here we go. <laughs> you have to do something in this place to keep you occupied. I'm not one to deal with rocks or collect pennies. I read the papers. My favorite issue is my case trial. Is your case trial, really? It makes me relive the crowning achievement of the New York Police Department. Hey, detective? Ah. Uh, I'm not here to discuss... I want to run my fingers through my hand. I'm flicking it away. I'm not here to discuss your arrest. Just the circumstances surrounding it, right? Cut the crap, Jack again. My partner gets very violent. I remember Detective Stalia. After the beatings I've acquired in this hole, his assaults mean nothing more to me. Wanna bet? I'll save you the trouble of calling your dog of a partner on me and recount the murder of your fiance. The night two years ago didn't go as smoothly as we had previously planned. Your girl made a lot of noise, detective. A lot. So much that we gagged her with chloroform, as one of my boys stated. I personally took the shot. The one that killed her. And I'm shaking my head over that now. This story sucks so much. It, it'll all make sense at the end. Or it'll make less sense than it did now. That's why it sucks. That's like when... when uh, Brandon Lee died when they were making The Crow, and it doesn't, when you watch the movie, you can't tell, you know, when he died, because it's so seamlessly fixed here. Here you can tell where I'm like, okay, just, just, just write something in and be done with it. I'm like a WWE writer, okay? Uh, I'm... I just write crappy storylines and, and know that they get by. Just as long as they have the ending I want, it's fine. Uh, can the rest of your family vouch for that? They can. Why do you ask? That's none of your business. Actually, it is. You're investigating one of my people. I want to know why. People in hell want ice water. Thank you for your time. You know, ice water would be really nice. I remember. What is in this? Water. Tea. Used to be tea. I got up without a word. Signal for Jack that it was time to go with a wave. You know, or come on, something like that. It was time to go investigate the family. The family, none of these families have names. The boss doesn't have names. The chief doesn't have names. So you have no reference of time, except for it's been two years. The family is the most successful family in all of New York. They pretty much fell apart after the second in command took control. The second in command is a jerk bigot, which is basically the same thing. The family got sick of, in all honesty. We started at the bottom of the ladder, as we should, the lowest of the low. They all had the same story to give us. The murder was recounted multiple times, but something they hadn't said was the thing that was bugging me. Why was the price on her head? What despicable act? had she committed against them for her to, for them to want to kill her they had to have had a motive they had to have had a motive they had to 
uh, I get notifications from my music teacher still and she comes up with the weirdest well not weirdest but like random stuff she does like motivational daily um, things that I probably should read that would probably improve my mood but I don't I guess I can put my glasses back on my glasses let's talk about my glasses for a second they really don't improve my sight that much they're not a very strong prescription I don't really need a strong prescription but they're stylish and they're cute so I'm gonna wear them I've been getting a lot of comments about my glasses so I'm gonna keep wearing them um forgot where I was now shit I was going to find out what that motive was. I reiterated the question to Jack, who had no clue, but gave me a theory that rattled me to my very core and left me cold. Maybe they were coming for you. I reacted as if he had struck me. After all my years in the police force, I gained a reputation as an all-around tough guy. Yeah, like that would ever happen. And after Lucy's death, I had turned into a giant wuss. That's me. Are. Wait, wait a minute. Wait. Are you saying that that they killed her because of me? I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you, man. I think that's what happened. That that because I'm I'm I'm, I'm a detective. Not only that, but you are the detective, the one that put them away, the one who slowed their momentum to a stop. They were going to take their revenge one way or another. They were going to destroy your life. They did a fine job with that. That they did, Tony. You're only a shell of what you once were. You need to pull it together. I nodded. I did need to pull it together. I never did. Another plot hole is coming. Now, right here, you can tell where it's like, I just want to get it done, you know, get it finished, get it out there. Uh, so this is where you can really start telling. Because there were supposed to be more characters, more people were interested in it, and I just said, fuck it. I said, fuck that. I don't care about anybody else. I want to get this finished. The next few months were spent investigating this case. The only evidence we had that this case was still open was from hearsay from a supposed friend. My grief got worse as the months went on. My hallucinations were beginning. I began to start seeing Lucy's face on every woman I saw going down the street. My nightmare continued. I just spit all over my fucking screen. My nightmare continued as the friend walked in the door one day while I was starving over the dreaded and technically co closed case notes. I greeted her. What is it with this case that's so important to you? Lucy's not dead. Enough games, woman! Shit. She came close to me, looked me right in the eyes. I'm Lucy, Tony. She spoke with the assurance and confidence that was Lucy's thing. But I believe that this was all in my head, another grief-induced hallucination. She then began to tell me memories, memories of when we met, our trip to the Caribbean, her meeting my parents. All these things were clear in my head. I felt like I was there with her, another hallucination. Ugh. Get out of my head! Lucy's dead! I'm not dead. I'm right here with you now. Believe me, love. She placed her hands on my face. Her touch was warm and comforting. She leaned in and pressed her lips softly against mine. Gentle and firm was Lucy. The longer she kissed me, the more I became convinced that this was her. I knew those lips and couldn't mistake them. She eventually pulled away from me and a smile crossed her lips as she realized that I finally returned to reality. 
She then told me the tale of her death, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I took a drug that stopped my breathing as the mafia gagged me with chloroform. I was, and I'm going to fill in some plot holes here. I was wearing a bulletproof vest under her nightgown, apparently. Just, just shut up and go with it. I did this so you could put the mafia away for good. So, we, so that we could live our lives happy together. And without worry. I did this for us. Wow. That was all I could muster. In terms of speech. Instead of continuing, I threw my arms around her and held her close. Hold on. I can't see the rest. My life was back together. I got it all together. Uh, I got it together, all thanks to Lucy and the, and the case that should not have been. And this was a pain in the ass to get people to uh, work on. Simply because you can't find a girl who's willing to do an on-screen kiss, especially with me. I mean, look how disgusting and repulsive I am. How the hell was I supposed to get someone to do an on-screen kiss with me? Alright, so, my fishing for compliment session aside, let's talk about the backstory behind this story. Now this is a story I've done several times, several times. I went through a depression, as most of you know, um, starting April of 2011, spanning until really December of uh, 2011. And this was actually posted December 31st, 2011. I met this girl who I've talked about many, many, many times to many of you to the point where you're probably sick of it by now. And she was actually the one that kind of pulled me out of my depression. I, I have so much fun with her uh, when, when we do get together um, because she's so different. It's not... She's not that different, but she's got her quirks about her that I enjoy. Uh, like like all of you, but that's a story for another day. Um, and she was actually set up to be Lucy in this one. And um, uh, I, I had a falling out. Uh, I almost lapsed back into a depression. Uh, due to a misunderstanding on my part, uh, I fought for my, my, I had it in my head that I was right with what I was doing, and when I found out that I was wrong, I took it upon myself to fight uh, verbally uh, to persuade her that I was I was right, but of course, as fate would have it, I cannot be right. Um, I can't be right at all. I, that that. That would be ludicrous for me to be correct in this day and age, and especially in that area. I'm never right in that area. I'm right everything else. Ninety-nine percent of the time, you can ask Lainey. Okay, look her up. You know, hit her up on Facebook. She'll tell you. Ninety-nine percent of the time, I'm right. So when it strikes me that I'm wrong. And what I've done, or what I've said, or what I've thought is wrong, I fucking lose it. And I lost it here. And that's a day that's probably going to haunt me for the rest of, well, not for the rest of my life, but for a good long while. 
Because I made a complete ass out of myself. Literally. I'm... I screamed. I didn't scream. I yelled. I... Followed. I did my best to try and keep the conversation going and on to where I could I could get my point across, get what I was trying to say for months before that, at least five months before that. There was a time where I started to get paranoid. Like maybe I'm not right. Maybe Maybe this is all in my head, you know, maybe I'm just hallucinating like Tony was. And that's what it turned out to be. I mistook what was happening and twisted it around. And she only came to that realization just a couple of days ago, actually. And this was in, I don't know, May. And, um... And I found out why I can't be right, and it just fucking blows. Uh, and I tell you this now because it all links into the story. It all links into this because my depression started uh, with Lucy's death, which means Lucy's disappearance which is still ongoing. When Lucy resurfaces in the story, that's when I meet uh, the girl and I believe that we started something. But we didn't, but that's not going to be in the story. We ended on a happy note, didn't we? Um... So let's end on a happy note. Right after this, I'm going to go right back to The Shining. I know some of you are behind in the story. That's okay. Alright? You can catch up when I finish. Alright? Because I've talked to a few of you. You're behind or you haven't started yet. There's 58 chapters in The Shining. Okay? We're going to have to move if we're going to ever get this book finished. So, with that in mind, I'm going to end this video. I'm going to upload it, and then I'm going to or I'm gonna get it started uploading, and then I'm going to um, start on with The Shining, Chapter 18. And I'm sorry this went on for an incredibly long time, and I had to talk about shit I don't like talking about but this fucking story always uh, makes me talk about it so hopefully I don't have to read it again or have anything to do with it again because I've tried to block that and the argument that I that was pretty one-sided out of my mind and it's not helping at all so, I'm in the right mindset for The Shining, I just have to say that, because it's it's getting very emotional. Alright, uh, I'll try and cheer up and then bring you more of The Shining.